The Chosen Season 4 Episode 2 is now officially streaming in the Chosen app, and this is a very, very exciting day because we are moving right along through Season 4. This episode, Confessions, was packed with a lot of great stuff, stuff that's not in the Bible, and huge Bible moments that I can't wait to talk about with you. So today, we're going to talk about five things that you may have missed from Season 4 Episode 2 of The Chosen Confessions. Hello, my name is Eli Hollingsworth, and welcome back to Against the Current and the Chosen Podcast, the biggest podcast about the Chosen TV series. And hey, if you're new here, I would recommend going ahead and subscribing because I'm going to be coming out with tons of content about the Chosen Seasons 4, 5, and beyond. So you're going to want to stay updated on everything happening in the Chosen community. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. Now, first up, let's talk about that first scene of Season 4, Episode 2 with John the Baptist and Jesus. This dream that The Chosen portrays Jesus having is a really, really cool, artistic way to portray the fact that John the Baptist is free. Jesus is standing alone in a field mourning John the Baptist's death, and he comes up and throws his shackles off and shows Jesus that he's free. He is free from his earthly body and is now in heaven. And Jesus will meet him there soon. So this is a very, very cool... This scene is kind of similar to the Season 3, Episode two by two where the disciples go out two by two and are healing and cleansing people the whole sequence is in black and white like the first 30 seconds of this episode are completely silent because jesus is just standing in a field we get this long wide shot of the camera zooming in on jesus it's really really cool and this is a perfect example of the chosen using the medium of cinema and the medium of art to showcase how things are being portrayed on the film as opposed to just telling the audience things there's a way to show them and there's a cool way to visualize something and have the viewer put it together themselves what it means instead of just telling them over and over again obnoxiously and repeating it to them the chosen respects its audience and it knows that we are intelligent human beings with our own brains so it's really cool to see this depicted here and this is a unique and, and different scene that i think is very very cool and i love what it signifies here and how they show john the baptist triumph in his last days of his life do you think i've come to give peace on earth I have not come to bring peace but a sword I mean division see next up let's talk about this really cool passage which is taken directly from Matthew 10 starting in verse 34 in the chosen season 4 in the first two episodes we've seen the progression of Thomas and Ramah's relationship where Thomas and Ramah have had a little bit of a spark, a little bit of a flame in the past few seasons, and they kind of like each other. But Ramah's father, Kofni, is not a believer, and he's very much against just giving his daughter away to some random dude who's on the road with another random dude. Which is pretty reasonable, although he is pretty hard-headed and could be a little nicer about it. This whole storyline has been progressing, and we haven't really known where it's been going, how far they're going to take it, but uh, in this episode, The Chosen uses it to portray and visualize an interesting thing that Jesus said and a warning he gave to his disciples about what he's really here to do and his purpose and that kind of thing. So starting in Matthew 10, verse 34, it reads, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Now that last part I don't think was in the episode, but this kind of idea of Jesus saying that if you love your father or your mother more than you love Jesus, and that is not a good thing. And this is kind of a very, you know, disruptive, controversial thing for Jesus to say in the Jewish culture. Simon Bar Jonah, your parents' name is included in your actual name. So, you know, there's this very high idea of your father and your mother, and you kind of pick up your father's trade, and there's a lot of the emphasis on the parents in the Jewish culture. So for Jesus to say, you got to love me more than you love your parents. Pretty controversial thing to say, but it was really cool to see that visualized here. And this Ramah Thomas storyline is progressing more, and we'll get some bigger lessons out of the storyline, as we'll see on Sunday in episode three. For those who haven't seen it yet, it's going to be mind-blowing. Uh, But this other little mini lesson to be visualized and taken here was a little bit unexpected and cool to see them reference this particular passage and use this storyline to kind of bring out that other lesson. Welcome to the gates of hell. And 
moving right along, let's talk about Caesarea Philippi. So while Jesus and his disciples are recognizing the death of John the Baptist by participating in Shiva, which is a Jewish tradition where seven days after someone you know dies, you don't visit any friends, you wear low stools and you sit low to the ground, you cover all your curtains, and you stay in the house of the person who died for seven days just to mourn and recognize the fact that they are dead. In the episode, though, Jesus finds a little bit of a loophole in this Shiva tradition and decides to take his disciples on a road trip to Caesarea Philippi. And it is here that Nathaniel notes that he used to do construction, used to work here, something that we saw earlier in Season 2, Episode 2, so that's an interesting detail. But the disciples are getting a little bit weary as they're heading to Caesarea Philippi, and that's because it was also known as the Gates of Hell. This is where the first king of Israel, also known as Jeroboam, led the northern kingdom of Israel into idolatry. It's where the Greeks and Romans received revelations from the Greek god Pan. Caesarea Philippi was also known as Panius because it was a temple to the god Pan, where the residents would do lots of weird things with goats and animals to receive revelations from the god Pan, who was known as giving revelations and visions to people, and they believed that somehow made them closer to him. And there was a lot of really, really gross, horrible stuff going on at, at Caesarea Philippi, also known as Panius, which is where the disciples were headed, and that's why they were so uneasy as they were headed into there. And it's not really clear why Jesus took his disciples to this particular spot to announce that he was the Messiah and that he was going to build his church on the rock of Peter's confession of him being the Christ. But a pretty good indication is maybe that it was called the Gates of Hades, and he uh, particularly said, the Gates of Hell will not prevail against my kingdom. And it's here that we get the epic scene where Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they all say their different answers, but then he says, who do you say that I am? And Peter steps up and says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, on this confession, I will build my church, referring to Peter's confession that he is the Son of God. I think that's what Jesus is referring to when he says, this is what I will build my church on. Is Peter wholeheartedly believing that Jesus is the Son of God? Now, the reason why he elevates Peter and changes his name from Simon to Peter in front of the group is not really, I mean, Peter was just the first one to say it, right? <laughs> but this was a very significant scene where Jesus, you know, elevates Peter and says, you are are now called Peter. He changes his name, which is something that happens in Jewish culture, you know, to signify a change in someone when Jacob had his name changed to Israel. And this is kind of, I mean, Peter still acts like Simon and he gets called Simon later down the line when he does something stupid. But uh, it was a really big moment. And this is a really powerful scene and a change in Peter where he's being called to, you know, be greater. And he's becoming, you know, as Shahar said in the live stream, a completely different person. Super duper cool. And hey, if you want to hear my full thoughts on every episode of The Chosen Season 4, you can go ahead and listen to my podcast, link down below in the description, where I talk about every episode in depth, all the little details, everything that happens in every episode, and discuss my thoughts, what do I think about it, and maybe I share a little bit more of my critical thoughts. I, I try to be pretty positive here on YouTube and talk about all the good things. But uh, you can hear everything I think about every episode of The Chosen down below in my podcast. It's just a lot longer, and I'm able to talk more and be kind of more free, less editing, that kind of thing. So if you want to check that out, be sure to listen to my podcast. Link down below in the description. Shamai! We've gone on too long. And now let's talk about Caiaphas. So in this episode, we get the introduction of maybe one of the biggest opposers of Jesus's ministry, and that is Caiaphas, the high priest of Jerusalem, played by Richard Fancy, who played Mr. Lipman in Seinfeld, which is really, really cool. He does a great job in this season, and his performance is really, you know, powerful and just awesome. He plays a very menacing villain. So Caiaphas was a member of the Sanhedrin, which denied any existence of the afterlife or the spiritual realm, which was a big reason why they were opposed to Jesus's ministry, talking about heaven, himself being God, all the spiritual stuff that the Sanhedrin were very adamantly against. So Caiaphas was the son-in-law of Annas, who was the former high priest of Jerusalem. So he's a little privileged. He kind of got to weasel his way to be the high priest, and maybe he was a little bit favored by his father-in-law to be chosen because the high priest has the power to choose whoever they want to be the next high priest. So uh, maybe he got a little bit of an in there, you know, a little bit of a Nepo baby. But he's definitely a very politically involved figure, and the crucifixion of Jesus had to do a lot with politics. The Chosen really does a good job of going into that, exploring the different parties of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the political aspects and the religious, cultural parts of all of this that were super important and had a huge impact on why things played out the way they did as to why Jesus was crucified, why people were so mad, why it happened, when it happened, and how it happened, and all that stuff is really well explored here. And there's a lot of talking, but there is some pretty interesting stuff that they're referring to. So Caiaphas being introduced was a super cool, fun sight to see. 
Uh, I can't wait to see more of him later in the season. And Richard Fancy, who plays Caiaphas, does a fantastic job. I make people what they aren't. And here is an honorable mention as a smaller detail that you may not have noticed. In Season 4, Episode 2, Jesus says that he makes people what they aren't. And this is actually a direct reference to a verse in the Bible from Romans 4.17 which reads, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. When Jesus is saying, I make people what they aren't, it's really a cool way of showing how he changes people. Simon, as we get to seasons four and probably five, is kind of a completely different person than how we met him in season one. And this is continuing in the idea of the chosen of not what we were. Jesus completely changes us and transforms our minds and our souls as we're on this journey as Christians. And it's really, really cool to see in, in ways that we could never imagine when we start on it to where now as we continue in our walk and in our life, we look back and we go, whoa, I, I, Jesus completely changes our entire person. It's really, really cool. All right, real quick, before I give you my fifth and final detail that you missed from this episode, let me just remind you to please subscribe to Against the Current and the Chosen Podcast. Hey, it really helps me out. And also go listen to my podcast. I promise you're not going to regret it. If you're a fan of The Chosen, if you're not a fan of The Chosen, I would recommend you stay tuned in on everything happening in The Chosen community because I want to hear from you guys, the fans, and I want you guys to be connected and stay updated on everything happening with The Chosen. So go ahead and subscribe and make it easy on yourself uh, to be updated on everything that the chosen does next but seven but 77 times i could stack him up that high if i really broke down each offense and the consequences <laughs> all right and for our fifth and final detail we gotta talk about matthew 18 15 so in this episode we get the epic and awesome conclusion and the resolution of simon and matthew's conflict that has been going on since season one where Matthew was a tax collector and was spying on Peter to help Quintus get him arrested, and Peter did not like that and still harbored that in himself for seasons two, three, and now ending in four, where they forgive and make up. But Matthew does have to deal with the fact that he still wronged Peter in the first place, has to apologize to him first, which is what Jesus tells Matthew. Which, by the way, is a reference to Matthew 6.14, which reads, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This idea of forgiving someone else for their trespasses is implying that you also have trespasses that need forgiving. Matthew has to deal with the fact that he wronged Peter, and even though Peter is still mad and harboring his anger for Matthew in his heart, Matthew still did something in the first place, so he has to make up for that with Peter. This is a really cool and kind of philosophical, deep, intellectual idea that is thrown in here into The Chosen. And obviously, The Chosen uses it as a way to show the personification of Matthew 18. Where, starting in verse 21, it says, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, as many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. This is just a really cool way to tie in this, this passage, and I love the way that the Chosen decided to include Matthew 18, verses 21 and 22. It was just a really beautiful way of, of showing this, and, and when Peter marches up to Matthew at the very end of the episode and just hugs him, and even though Matthew doesn't like to be touched, and Peter just grabs him and hugs him, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful moment. And all of us, you know, I remember at the premiere, all of us were just cheering and it was just awesome. And such a cool moment and a great way to end this episode that already has so many great moments. And it was just beautiful to watch. And I love the way the show included this Bible moment in the episode. So there you have it. There are five things that you might have missed in The Chosen Season 4, Episode 2, Confessions. And hey, before you go, I do want to let you know that I'm going to be doing a live discussion of The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 1 and 2, right here on my YouTube channel. Go to my channel and check it out at 7.30 p.m. Don't miss it. I'm going to be discussing it with you guys. This is my first kind of live stream that I'm doing, so I hope that you'll go ahead and join me there and we can talk and discuss episodes one and two of the chosen season four it's going to be a lot of fun i hope to see you there and uh go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already but thank you so much for watching and making it to the end of this video i highly appreciate it and i can't thank you enough i love the support from this community and engaging with all of you fans about the show that we all love so much so thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next video slash live stream binge jesus mm -hmm.